I would like now to move on to the last challenge that we had, which was, um, which is, I think, uh, what video is here. So he can tell us more about the um, 4D light open optics segmentation challenge. Okay, so welcome to this, my small talk on how we solve this task with our approach, contrastive instance associations or for the panoptic segmentation. So let's begin. So let's start with the task definition, which is basically to perform on a sequence of scans, semantic segmentation and instance segmentation. This is what we call panoptic segmentation. And the idea is that the instances of the, the ID of the instances should be consistent over time. This is why it's 4D. So uh, let's go on on our overview of our approach. So we take as input uh, the 3D gather scan, and we have, uh, apply a panoptic segmentation backbone to obtain the panoptic segmentation, and which is basically for each point, a semantic class and an instance ID. We also will leverage the point west features from the feature extractor. So basically we are doing tracking by detection Kind of thing. So it's first performing a single scan segmentation plus uh, an association scan. So we first select using the instance prediction from the backbone. We select the points depicting each instance and their features and use our network, our contrastive aggregation network to get a single instance wise feature. Once we have this feature, we want to associate them, associate each instance over time using this feature with our association module, then this way the ID of the instances will be consistent over time. And using also the semantic predictions from the backbone, we can get our segmented scan with again IDs that are consistent over time. So let's dive onto the contrastive aggregation network, which is the core that takes the points, so the points depicting one instance and their feature and its features and allows us to get a single instance feature. Uh, so we first have a few uh, sparse convolutional blocks to learn not only from features but also from the shape of the object, then a pooling layer to get the single feature vector and a few linear blocks and a projection head to get the final instance wave feature that will allow us to do the associations because this instance uh, feature will be similar for the same uh, instance in different time steps, but will be different. That's what we call consistent over time. So why contrastive is because we, and basically by our approach in contrastive learning, which in the self-supervised setup um, or unsupervised setup is the idea is to compare an anchor with negative samples. And these samples are usually obtained through augmentations. And in the supervised setup, we can select with the labels positive and negative examples and we compare them. So that's where we are going to use in that we what we used in our approach. Um, in our case, each sample is one instance. And since the appearance of these instances change over time, we can use this as a natural augmentation and we don't have to perform any augmentation to get these samples. So we just select instances uh, from different scans. So the positive samples are the same instance in different time steps in a temporal sequence of scans. And the negatives are all the rest of the, all the other instances in the same scan, in the other scans in the same sequence, and in other sequences of scan in the same batch. So this way we, we use a lot of negative samples, which is uh, very beneficial for contrastive uh, learning. However, there are, since we are using the features from a panoptic segmentation network, we have a challenge, which is that these features are usually similar for instances from the same semantic class, because then the semantic and the instance head will be the one, so the, maybe the instance head will be the one that gets a, a, a different feature for each one of them. So, and this way we cannot use straight this feature for association and showing this histogram in which we compute the mean feature. So we have points depicting one uh, points and features depicting one instance. If we get the mean feature for each of the instances and we get the similarity between them in a sequence of scans, 
we can see that there is a large number of instances with high similarity, and this makes it difficult to identify the same instance in different scans. So we cannot use only these features as input for the network because there is not enough information to learn this, this distinct instance wise feature. So we want we decided to include some position information through a positional encoding. So we generated using the point coordinates a Fourier feature encoding of the same size or the same dimension of the features coming from the so for each point a positional encoding which we add with a feature coming from the backbone and when we plot these histogram similarities we can see that the number of instances with high similarity is drastically reduced and now these features uh, from different instances will be more distinct so they are very suited to perform the association so another challenge was when selecting the points to the pick that the pick one instance so that in training time we have the labels that say okay all these points are the instance but when at inference time we have to use the predictions and these predictions are not perfect so what what happens in the end is that we have different inputs when we train with the labels then this is not uh, applicable at inference time so one small example is here we have three instances the first one on the bottom right is like perfect instance because all the points that depict this instance uh, are all correctly selected in the second case this instance is split in two because there is a imperfect clustering in the backbone to obtain this instance prediction and then it divide, uh, that divides this instance into two smaller ones and the third case is an incomplete instance because some of the points uh, get the wrong semantic class and then they are not so usually at the borders and they are not considered during the clustering step and then they are missed. So what we decided to do in order to emulate what happens at the inference time is to generate two augmentations. The first one is the confer augmentations in which we drop points at the borders by normalizing the coordinates, for example, between uh, minus one and one and only keeping points within a range uh, like zero six, for example, and then dropping the rest. And another uh, augmentation, which is a split augmentation, which create a random imaginary plane and only keep points on one side. So this, in this case, we can see that this is very similar what, to what happens at, um, at inference time, and it help, this helps in training. The other important model in our approach is the association model, which we use to associate instances over time. Um, but not only combining appearance, but also appear, an appearance model, but also a motion model. So as we discussed previously, we generate for each instance a single instance feature, which we will compare with all of the other instances. So we have the, all the instances detected in the current scan and all the previously tracked instances, and we want to, to associate them. So uh, we, get the, we get the features, we compute the cosine similarity, and we, we get a cost feature, and then a feature cost. And then we also apply uh, as to get some information about the motion, we apply a constant velocity motion model independent on the set of the sensor ego motion. And then we can get a linear combination of the, of the feature cost and the center distance between the, all the current instances and the previously, uh, and the predicted positions of, the, of all previously tracked instances. This way, we get the cost that is combining both appearance and motion model and for each like from each current instance with all with each previous instance we can build the cost matrix and then use the hunger method to solve this problem and get the, the pair of associations so when talking about the positional encoding and the motion model both so far rely on the coordinates of the points and if we use only local coordinates the positions of the instances or the points are not consistent over time and the ego motion should be compensated. For example, if we have a sequence of four scans, we can see that the non-moving uh, or static instances, which are parked cars, appear to move sideways. And actually the moving object, which is in front, which is moving on the same speed as the car, appears to be static. If instead we add um, the sensor post estimate using a SLAM approach, we can see that actually the static or non moving objects remain static, and we can see how, yeah, the, the moving object is, we can actually see that it's moving. So, 
what we do is we apply um, this correction using the slam approach to get consistent poses. And we recompute the features for all previously tracked instances by updating the positional encoding and then using our network. So the, we, the, there is, our results are shown in this table. We can see that we improved around three percent points in the LiDAR segmentation and tracking quality without including this post information. And when including this, we improved even three percent points for more. Um, is, yeah, we should notice that since we are using a single scan panoptic segmentation backbone, uh, this post information does not change the semantic segmentation profile. As we can see that the numbers are the same. Here is a, also a short video of the instant segmentation, which has consistent IDs over time. Basically, the colors are consistent over time. And yeah, not only for static, but also for moving objects. Uh, yeah, and this is. Apart, this is the instant segmentation with consistent ideas, apart from and the other thing to show would be the semantic segmentation. Okay, so that's all from my side. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And um, here I am in case you have any questions. Yeah, thanks a lot for your talk and congratulations to, to winning this challenge.